Farmers often find themselves asking, when should I plant cassava and when should I harvest my cassava crop? These are important questions. To make an informed decision, three important things must be considered. First, there is the impact of weather. When planting, there needs to be enough soil moisture or rain still to fall to ensure the crop establishes. The amount of rain the crop will receive depends on the planting date. The planting date will also determine at which growth stage, young or old, the cassava will receive rain and when it will experience drought. Second, cropping practices must be modified to fit the planting date. This could mean adjusting weed control, fertilizer application, choice of variety and land preparation. Third, farmers must consider when they wish to harvest by considering the outlet market and price for cassava at harvest time. Let's discuss these considerations one by one. The first important factor in choosing a planting date for cassava is the weather, especially the rainfall. However, to really understand how weather plays a role, it's important to first understand how cassava grows. A cassava plant has two growth stages. The first stage lasts for 8 to 12 weeks after planting. During this stage, the plant establishes by growing roots and sprouting stems and leaves. At the end of the first stage, some of the plant's roots will start bulking, which is the start of forming the future storage roots. At the same time, the growth of stems and leaves accelerates. The storage roots continue swelling and start to accumulate starch. About six months after planting, when the canopy is tall and lush, starch accumulation reaches its maximal rate. The roots will continue to accumulate starch at high rates as long as rainfall is sufficient. Though the cassava can withstand long periods of drought, it grows best in a hot, humid climate with ample rainfall during its growth stages. During drought periods, the plant will grow slowly. It will first shed older leaves and if the drought persists, more and more leaves will fall. Once rains resume, the cassava will grow new leaves quickly by drawing on the starch stored in its roots. This means that the size and starch content of the storage roots will decrease with the onset of rains after a long period of drought. Now, how does all this information affect the decision of when to plant cassava? Firstly, it means that there should be sufficient rainfall during the first growth stage of the cassava so that the crop is well established. It's important that the cassava is not stressed at the time it initiates bulking the storage roots as this will reduce the final yield of the crop. In some soils, planting late in the rainy season is possible if the soil is deep and loamy and has stored a lot of moisture during the rainy season. In such soils, the cassava can establish with little or no rain. It will grow a few leaves and wait for the start of the next rainy season. The cassava also must receive sufficient rainfall between 6 and 12 months after planting when the bulking process reaches its maximal rate. Drought periods during this stage of growth would limit the plant's ability to accumulate starch. For a high yield, the crop must have received sufficient rain for at least four months after it reached the stage with highest starch accumulation rates. Choosing when to harvest also depends on the weather during the last three months of the plant's growth. If these final months have been mostly dry except for a few weeks prior to harvest, it's likely that the plant will have started transporting starch from its storage roots to the stems to form new leaves. This means that the roots will be smaller and lower in starch content. Instead, harvest during a period of drought or immediately after rains have resumed before the plants have a chance to transport starch from the storage roots to form leaves. Another option is to wait to harvest until rains have persisted for a few months so the cassava has formed a new canopy and has started the bulking process again and has accumulated a lot of starch in the storage roots. To better understand this timing, let's discuss some specific scenarios. Farmer John plants his cassava in early April, just as the rainy season begins. His crop takes root and produces lush green stems and leaves. By mid-June, the bulking process has begun. The roots continue to swell through the months of July to October, at which point the starch accumulation reaches its highest rates. 
When the dry season begins in November, the cassava slows its growth and it will come to a stop in January to February. In March, the rains resume and the cassava begins growing once again but draws starch from its storage roots to create new leaves. When Farmer John harvests at the end of April, he is disappointed with the size of the roots and their low starch content. If he had harvested right after the first rains in March, he would have found larger roots with higher starch content. Alternatively, if he had waited until late May or early June, the roots would have resumed the bulking process and he would have enjoyed a higher yield. Farmer Mary plants her cassava in July, much later than Farmer John. Her cassava establishes well, but has only just begun the bulking process when the dry season arrives in November. Her crop is much smaller and has fewer leaves than Farmer John's during the dry season. Her cassava sheds a few leaves, but most remain on the plants. When the rains arrive in March, her cassava continues growing and reaches maximal bulking rate during the following five months of rainfall. Farmer Mary harvests early July, 12 months after planting, and is pleased with her yield. Had she harvested earlier, she would not have been as happy because her crop would not have had enough time and rainfall to fill the roots during the bulking period. So what have we learned? In short, it's important to carefully consider rainfall patterns when deciding the best time to plant and harvest. While weather is a hugely important consideration in choosing a planting and harvesting schedule, it is not the only consideration. Next, let's discuss the implications on crop management practices. The planting and harvest time have an important impact on five aspects of crop management practices. 1. Land clearing. 2. Tillage operations, 3. Weed control, 4. Fertilizer application, 5. Pests and disease management. Let's look at these one by one. For land clearing, farmers often have more time during the dry season, especially if the land is bushy and the fallow vegetation must be slushed before clearing. However, if herbicide spraying is the farmer's preferred method for land clearing, they must be used during the rainy season when the vegetation is green. Herbicides are only effective on fresh and green weeds. Next, the soil should be tilled after rains have resumed, when the soil is moist. Only then can a good land preparation be achieved. In addition, ploughing or harrowing will destroy the early weeds and can reduce weed infestation later on. Farmers intending to harvest during the dry season or right after rains have resumed should reach the field because it makes the harvest easier. Otherwise, pulling the roots out of dry soil will be difficult and may even result in broken roots. The planting date will also impact on weed pressure. Planting early in the rainy season means higher weeding requirements as the weeds will grow faster with ample rainfall. The weeds will germinate over the entire rainy season, causing several weeding operations. Controlling weeds during the first three months after planting cassava is crucial to achieve high yields. For more detailed information on land preparation and weed control, watch our video on Best Planting Practices and Weed Control. Now, let's see how planting and harvest date impact the fertilizer requirements of the crop. As the examples of farmers John and Mary showed, the chosen planting and harvest dates greatly impact the yield of a crop. If the expected yield is low, then the response to fertilizer will be low as well. Therefore, the amount of fertilizer to apply should be adjusted to the yield expectation for the chosen planting and harvest schedule. Fertilizer application should be done in the first three to four months after planting when the soil is moist. This means that if a farmer chooses to invest in fertilizer, they should plant when ample rainfall is expected in the first three to four months after planting. Watch our video on fertilizer recommendations for cassava for more detailed information about fertilizer application. The final consideration when choosing planting and harvest dates is the pest and disease problems in the area. Insects like grasshoppers and green mites can cause more severe damage to young cassava plants than to older ones. Farmers should also consider the occurrence of cassava brown streak disease in their area, which is common in East Africa and transferred by whiteflies. 
In areas where the disease is common, planting late increases the chances of infection in the crop's early growth stages, especially if they are nearby older infested cassava fields. Harvesting late causes higher root rot damage in affected cassava crops. With these potential disasters in mind, it's important to control the disease by planting healthy cuttings from registered planting material producers or with the help of partner organizations like MEDA or BASICS. During crop growth, the field must be regularly roged to ensure the crop is healthy and clean. Finally, We'll conclude with considerations about marketing and prices of cassava roots at the time of harvest. When selling cassava roots to a cassava processing factory, the price is commonly set based on the starch content of the roots, though some starch factories do not. When selling to a common fresh root market, then the price is simply set per unit of weight. However, Many local processors have preferences for specific varieties and may pay more for these varieties. Processing factories that set prices based on starch content will typically take a sample of the roots and conduct a test. They weigh the sample in the air, then submerge the sample in water and weigh it again. This allows them to determine the roots density, which is a good indication of starch content. A higher starch content will attract a higher price. Starch factories will typically prefer specific improved cassava varieties that have a higher starch content than local varieties. Farmers should try to select these improved varieties for their crops. Starch content is also directly related to rainfall in the final months before harvest. Roots reach their maximum starch content at the end of the rainy season, so harvesting at that time ensures a higher price. However, harvesting can prove more difficult during the dry period. If harvested after rains resume, cassava will fetch lower prices because stored starch has been transferred to produce new leaves. If you see your crop rapidly producing new leaves and green stems, it is removing starch from the roots to grow new leaves and stems. Once this has started, it is better to wait and harvest later in the rainy season once bulking has resumed. Consider the starch content and quality of roots expected when choosing a harvest date. Starch factories may adjust their set prices according to market evolution. Some factories may offer interesting contracts with price guarantees as well as credit arrangements for access to tractors, fertilizer and pesticides. For markets that only consider the total weight of the root produce and not starch content, it is important to stay well informed about price evolutions throughout the year. Cassava prices change from year to year and month to month. Peak harvesting period generally brings the lowest prices, whereas periods of cassava scarcity bring higher prices. When there is maize grain scarcity and high maize prices, then often cassava prices will be higher as well. Staying informed and anticipating price shifts allows farmers to make better decisions about harvest dates. Farmers may want to consider investing in transport services or establishing associations or cooperatives to jointly market their produce for better prices. Let's summarize what we have learned. Deciding when to plant and harvest plays an important role in a cassava farm's success. There are three main considerations in this decision. First, farmers should think about weather patterns to ensure the crop receives ample rain right after planting and during the bulking process. Harvesting should not be done after rains have resumed following a drought because root yields and starch content will be low. Next, the implications of cropping practices come into play. Planting date affects land clearing, tillage, weed control, fertilizer and the pressure of pests and diseases on a crop. Finally, market and price evolutions influence the best harvest date. If selling to a processing factory that sets prices based on starch content, farmers should choose a variety and harvest date that maximizes starch yield. If selling to another market, farmers should stay aware of price changes and trends throughout the year to choose the best harvest date. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information, here are some helpful resources.